Hey, hello everybody. June Allen here, your racial sobriety mentor from JuneAllen.net. And we also have... Hello, <laughs> it's Faith Agugu here from Australia and I'm the CEO of The Healing Process and partner with this beautiful woman here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. So, um, Faith is going home tomorrow. Boo hoo, boo hoo. She's going back to Australia. So we wanted to take an opportunity just to jump on and just hang out with you for a while and talk about some stuff um, that we think that you might find useful. Um, so just we'll just do some really quick housekeeping actually before we jump into the topic because we want to talk about deprivation versus um, abundance, what that looks like, how it shows up and stuff like that. Um, but before we get into that, we just a couple of things that we want to kind of remind you so that I don't forget or so that we don't forget. Um, the first thing is, obviously, we've got the um, we did the launch last Saturday of the, um, the Ghana, the Ghana retreat. retreat, which was an amazing uh, experience. Um, and if you go to uh, my website, heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net. I'll put a link in the comments. I think I haven't done it for the description because we're outside, but um, I will put the link in afterwards. But if you click the link in the in the, um, in the comments or the bio when I've finished. It will take you to a page um, and I'm going to put all the pictures up, all of the stuff from the launch. There is a video um, that Faith and I did last week where we talked uh, quite extensively about some of the stuff that's going to be happening in Ghana, which was really, really great. It was really fun um, doing that. So you get an opportunity to do that. And also, as a little sweetener, we, you'll be able to get, if you pay your deposit, which is $500, before the US 30th... Dollars. US dollars, yeah. 500 US dollars. Um, before the 30th of June, which is next Sunday, you can get $100 off the total cost. If you go to, um, again, click the link in the in the bio, it will actually take you to um, a page around Ghana. So it will tell you how much it costs. It will tell you all of that stuff. I'm not going to go into it here because we'll be here all day talking about the different bits and pieces. But, um, yeah, so if you do that before the 30th of June, you're going to get $100 off. Um so yes, if you're really, really interested in, in coming to Ghana, if you've, you saw the launch and stuff last week, um, jump on that um, before it actually uh, before it, it goes away next Sunday. So that's the one thing. Um, just trying to think if the, that's the main thing really uh, around the housekeeping. Is there anything else that you have I forgotten anything before we get no, into the topic? I think in terms of Ghana, that's everything. You know, other than it's happening and um, it's a really, really exciting and wonderful opportunity for um, any woman who wants to go deeper in her um, self-exploration mm. and it also ties in really perfectly with the topic that we're going to talk about today which is about deprivation mm. and um, you know why we choose to allow ourselves certain certain treats quote unquote mm. and maybe not others so it kind of yeah. ties in nicely yeah yep. Yeah, so let's 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 uh, dig into that then. So first of all, how do you define deprivation? Because I think you know, I think it'd be really good to kind of get clear on on how you def you define it. Mm, okay, so my for me it would be uh, not giving myself the things that I know um, helps me helps nourish me and helps me to flourish. Wow, so that's withholding withholding for myself for myself mm. things that i know really fill me up mm. you know they may not have any physical tangible qualities not qualities but yeah qualities maybe tangible qualities because mm. i think again um that thing for me as, as a black woman as an african woman um, I grew up with that sort of belief that you use money for things that you could see. You use money yeah. for education, house, roof over your head, all those things. But using money for, say, maybe things like therapy mm. um, or going on a holiday that may, um, that may not have any, any tangible, may not, uh, tangible benefits, but that absolutely fills my soul. For mm. me, as an African woman, that was something that was like foreign because that's yeah. not something I saw my family yeah. model for me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So how do you deprive um, deprivation? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's the same actually. Mm. It's very, very similar. Um, that thing about not nourishing myself or mm. not, and it, and it wasn't even a, it wasn't a conscious thing. Yeah. For me, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't a conscious thing. It was that thing of 
I didn't see it. Mm. You know, I mean, the way that my mum nourished herself were, like you said, it was tangible things. You know, mm. she would go to a department store and get herself yeah. a nice church hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? Yes. Um, or, and there's things that everyone, other people can see. Yes, and yeah. validates her. And validates her, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So my mum, I, that's how I saw, yeah. you know, self-care growing up. It was, yeah. it was, it was intangible things. Treating yourself. Yeah, or getting a new sofa or, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, making a, my mum would used to sew a lot. Yeah, you know, so yeah. she would make clothing and stuff like that. So that's how she nurtured herself. But mm. when it comes to emotional stuff, you know, Sustenance, stuff yeah. like that. I mean, she would nurture herself spiritually because she was very, you know, my, my family were very religious. They would go to church and stuff like that. So in that perspective, they knew how to nurture themselves spiritually. Mm. But when it comes to nurturing themselves emotionally, mm. they just, it, again, it, this is not a conscious thing. They just didn't know. They didn't. They didn't even know it was a thing. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, and that's what I was taught. I didn't understand what it meant to nourish myself emotionally, and um, so I, I didn't even know what that looked like. Mm. So, you know, that showed up in my life as yeah. an adult, yeah. where I didn't know how to do it either. Yeah. And and literally, I had to have a rock. I had to have a. You know, I got to a, into a really bad place. You know, a, 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 in a painful relationship. You know, a rock bottom where I had to sort of like. I was like, I don't know what's going on here, but I know I'm in pain and I need to, I need to, I need to get help. Mm. <laughs> you know, and that's when I sort of went into therapy and did all the recovery stuff and all the rest of it. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, the whole and deprivation thing is is um, mm. it's such a deep. It's Ooh, a big one, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. And you know, from a from a therapy perspective, you know, a lot of my clients come in without realizing what their needs are. So the amount of clients, I would say probably about say 80% of my clients come in with that thirst and hunger yeah. and they'll say something like, my parents were really, really good. I've got nothing to complain about and I should be grateful because mm. they gave me all the things they should have, but they didn't give me that emotional no. sustenance. Yeah. They didn't give me that thing that we are craving whether we that's uh, basic human yeah needs. and whether we articulate it on or whether we can articulate it, and i think that's one of the things that you we were talking before being unclear about our needs i think a lot of us don't even know that it's a need or yeah. that we should even have it as a need so i think that's why we feel guilty and mm. i think some of the women that come to me they always preface it by saying oh no but i had really great parents they they put a roof over my head you know there's that shame shoes yeah yeah i, yeah, had, yeah, I, I choose had shoes and, and i, I didn't have to worry for you know anything yeah. tangible but that emotional need and i think that that then gets internalized that yeah. as a grown woman i don't know or i could struggle to know what my needs are yeah. you know beyond taking care of myself physically mm. you know and yes. i think that's what this journey that you know you ladies are doing with June and the women that work for me work with me mm. are doing it's that that journey that we're going through you know that we're going okay we are clearly women that sense that there's something missing mm. you know in our needs being met something yeah. is missing yeah. so I think that how do we internalize that now to then not repeat those patterns of deprivation for ourselves. Yeah, mm. and it's it's hard for a lot of women to to step out of that mm. and, and say actually I do have an emotional need that's not being met because mm. it, there's a lot of you know there's a lot of uh, the women that I work with but they feel ashamed. Mm. They feel ashamed about the fact that they do want those needs met. The emotion mm. they feel ashamed that they've even got those they want emotion their emotional needs met in the first place. Mm. And then they feel guilt around the fact that, like what you were saying, they're, they're supposed to be just okay with the physical stuff, mm. you know, the fact that there's a roof. And I've had so, this is a common thing that I hear yeah. all the time from black parents of that generation that say that stuff, you know, well, you know, you were clothed and fed, you know. And I think, again, that's, you know, if, if, if there's a history of uh, slavery and all of that kind of stuff, and even just living under the system of racism, I think there is that thing of that we're somehow just supposed to be grateful that we're breathing. Yeah, just to get by. You, you know, we're surviving. We're surviving, and you know, nobody's, yeah. no, I haven't got a police officer clubbing me over the head with anything, mm. so therefore I should just be grateful for the fact that I'm alive and, I, and, and I'm fed and I've got a house and all the rest of it, and, and that somehow if we reach out and ask for our emotional needs to get met from each other, Mm. Um, or for, from a therapist or a support group or whatever, that somehow there's, it's a sign of weakness, mm. you know? So yeah, I think that, yeah. that, that is one of the ways I know that I've deprived myself in yeah, that way. Yeah, you know, I would yeah. feel ashamed about a lot of that stuff. And mm. I think it is important, you know, to, it's, it's such a relief 
you know, to, to, to live in abundance around your emotions is actually mm. being able to ask for help and being able to say, actually, I, I, I'm a human being and it's, yeah. it's a basic human need and I, I need to be around somebody that needs to hear me. Yeah, yeah. And you we were know? talking about prosperity as well the other day and yeah, what does it feel yeah. like to be prosperous? Not, not because most people think of prosperity, again, they think about material, Money. having abundance yeah. of material things. But what does it feel like to be prosperous emotionally? Mm. You know, what does that feel like to be prosperous in terms of like self-care? Yeah. You know, how, what would that look like? So that was kind of like an interesting one that we were discussing the other day. And that kind of brought us back to thinking about the retreat. Yeah. And I asked June, you know, June had said to me a while ago that she was going to go on a retreat. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to tell the ladies about that? Yeah. I, it kind of brings up sadness, actually, when I think about it, because mm. I, I, I've always wanted to go on a retreat. But I've, number one, I didn't, there's part of me that didn't want to go on my own. Um, and I suppose there was a part of me that was sort of, you know, that thing around, you know, do black women get on? Am I going to be accepted? All that mm. kind of stuff. You know, am I going to kind of get, get myself into a space that is not nurturing for me mm. because of the stuff that I had around, you know, my mum? All that mum stuff would come up, you know? So anyway, I made a decision and I said to Faith, I'm going to go on this retreat. So last year, I kind of, I, you know, I put down a deposit on a retreat. I went, the, the retreat will remain nameless because uh, it wasn't a very good experience. Um, but then what happened was, I, because the retreat was only for a few days, I decided that I was going to contact the resort that was, that was hosting the, the retreat and I was going to book some day, some extra days so that it would just make my time there, you know, because I hadn't had a, been on a holiday for like 12 years or something. Um, so I could just get some extra time. So anyway, I booked the extra, I spoke to the woman at the hotel. She was really lovely, really pleased, and she was just really lovely. Anyway, the woman that ran the retreat actually contacted me after I'd spoken to the, the owner about having some extra days. And she categorically said to me that I was not allowed, even though I booked it privately, separately from anything to do with the retreat, she said that I was not allowed to book any extra days outside of the retreat. And I was like, but hang on a minute, there's nothing doesn't to do with you. Sense, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. There's nothing to do with you. This is about my private mm. booking with the hotel with the hotel. It's nothing to do with your retreat, you and your retreat. Anyway, she she went on, she went on, she was not happy. She didn't want me to book it. She you know, and then she said to me, if you if you insist on, on coming to the retreat for the extra days, then I'm gonna refund you I I'd rather refund you the money if that's what you're gonna do. And um so I just thought, you know what, even if I decided not to go and spend the extra days. The, for me, that experience really dampened my. I, it just, it just, it ruined it for me. And I just thought, I, I, it just, she didn't have an answer as to why mm. she didn't want me to book the day. She was, I think, she was afraid that I was going to get all up in their business when they're preparing for the retreat and whatnot. But that's, that wasn't it. I was just going to go there and just relax. Mm. So anyway, the point of the story is, she refunded me the money, um, which was great. But the way that I deprived myself mm. was I didn't book another retreat. Mm. Yeah. I, I allowed that experience. So it was first stumbling block yes. and that was it. Yes, I allowed myself to be, uh, my emotion to take over around the fact that, oh, you know, black women, because it was a black women's retreat. Black women can't do this, do this, this and that. Uh, and it wasn't even a conscious thing. I kind of, I still wanted to go, but I just, I just never, I didn't prioritise it. Yeah. I didn't prioritise it, so I didn't end up not going on the retreat. I ended up having a resentment towards the woman that did the retreat because she didn't want me to go on it. And it kind of put me off. It mm. kind of put me off going to another black women's retreat because I just thought, this is what happens when you don't do this internal work. Yeah. You know, because it didn't trigger me enough to kind of never go on another black women's retreat ever again. But I just it just made me feel sad that yeah. that happened in the first place. And this woman clearly had some stuff going she on. She was being triggered. Yeah, yeah she was yeah. being triggered by not being able to control the whole experience, mm. even though it was nothing to do with her. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, and I think, you know, I allowed myself, I denied myself the, the experience of being nurtured mm. on a retreat with other black women because of my experience with her. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what shouldn't have, yeah. I shouldn't have allowed that to happen. And I think when you're not, you, when we're not used to that way of nurturing ourselves, you know, um, the first obstacle, it's yeah. enough to make us just go, no, 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 see, I didn't want to do that anyway. I knew that that wasn't a good idea. Right. You know, and it was funny, I, was, I had a therapy session with a client this morning and we were going through that same thing of, you know, she's a black woman, 
and hi, how are you know, us? hello, hi, how are and you know, she was just saying how she spends time between the sessions, some of the time, this week anyway, between sessions, thinking about reasons not to show up for the session, wow. you know, because for her, even though she knows that she's going, you know, this is what she wants to do, she wants her life to change, just that thing of like wanting to deprive herself of the nurturing, yeah. you know, because it's not normal. If it was about, and she's the one that gave me this example, you know, and I, what happened was her husband actually put the money in my account, <laughs> you know, because he said, you're doing the you're session, doing you know, but and what he said to her, which was really interesting, he said to her, if you were going to spend that money on a dress, you would have done oh it just God, like that. Oh my God, you about it. Yeah, that. and I thought it was interesting that he pointed that out. And I think, you know, again, as a, as a you know, as a culture, we, you know, we, we're good at doing bling. You yeah. know, we've got to show him where our money is. Cars you know, so people can see, you can glasses. see where our money is, yeah. you know. Yeah. But to kind of spend the money in ways that is not apparent to other people, so we don't mm. get that validation, I think it's, we can struggle with that. Yeah. You know, so she was struggling with, I don't want to spend this money on, on therapy. On therapy and yeah. you had that experience, the very first yeah. stumbling block, you went, no, I'm oh, not no, going to no, do no, this. No, no. Yeah. I'm going to find excuses not to yeah, not look to after myself or nurture myself or mm. nourish myself. So that's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It is really interesting. And I, and I think the other thing that I think is important, you know, for us to talk about around this whole conversation is, you know, the discussions that we'd had um, very early on about what we wanted to bring to the retreat mm -hmm. and the whole idea of we didn't want it to be like a budget um, mm. experience. And it would have been easy for us to do that. It would have been so easy for us to do that, to just kind of create something where women come together and we could have still done all the workshops and all the rest of it. And it would have been nice. It would have been nice. But to actually make it a luxury experience and, and, and start as we mean to go on. I mean, mm. even for me, I was thinking about, oh, you know, are people going to be into it? You know, are people going to allow themselves to surrender to that? to that level of nurturing mm. but we need it well maybe maybe you know what could be interesting is for me to turn it on to you you know june are you ready to surrender to that level of nurturing i am <laughs> i am i am yes please <laughs> i am i am but that, i think when, when those thoughts come up in my head it's the old thinking mm. it's the old you know it's that deprived me like mm, you know I uh, should you really be doing this and, 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 and I'm kind of projecting that stuff yeah. into the into the space so mm. I think it's really good that we keep having these conversations yeah. because and it's just to, to you know to reassure anyone else that's having those thoughts that yeah, it's, that it's just normal you. yeah it's normal. that it's normal yeah yeah I mean I'm in the wonderful position of being a veteran of retreats you know like I was saying that I've been to I would say close to 20 if not more than 20 retreats mm. and that would be um, from ranging from say two days to about two or three weeks you know wow. full on yeah and I've done many many retreats in Australia where I live but also I've done many retreats to to Bali some right. I've done retreats to Thailand too and I've done a lot of retreats to India mm. so just in, and I think the reason why I was so open to that is that I don't live in England and I really do think that living in England as a black woman there's a constraint to what is possible for me Wow, you know, that's yeah, what is possible for me? Well, I'm not living, living in Australia as a black woman, I'm not living under those limitations. Mm. So I don't see myself as, as it not being available to me. Yeah. You know, so when, when I made my first retreat, which would have been about, say, 20, maybe about 25 years ago, it was a, a Buddhist retreat, and there was, a, um, I think it was a four day, it was a four day Buddhist retreat to learn how to meditate. It would have been about mm. maybe 29 years. 20, maybe 27 years ago, I was allowed to learn to meditate, you know, and just being in that space, it didn't occur to me not to do it, you know. It's just a done deal. It, yeah, right? it just yeah. didn't occur to me not to do it, you know. And, and for me to kind of be in that space where I was immersed in this, in this, mm. in this bubble and I was cared for because my meals were provided and mm. you know all of those things and I was nurtured in those in those four days and then I was then I was absorbing also the Buddhist teachings and stuff but right. just just having someone three meals a day someone there ready for me to mm. feed me that was just divine to allow myself that was it well it's interesting that you're saying that mm. um and I'm going to share just kind of my <laughs> visceral response to you <laughs> to saying those things. And it's sort of like, uh, uh, oh, have a sense, you doors the sister love between us two. Oh, <laughs> bless you, Howard. Um, 
Yeah, I think, and I think I, I'm having a, a childhood visceral response mm. to it. It's almost like it's bringing up, on the one hand, the, the inner child in me is sort mm. of like, oh, my mum didn't give me I that. I didn't have that. There's a craving that, mm. you know, that my mum never nurtured me. So mm. it, it's almost painful for me to think about being nurtured. Mm. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So there was part of me that's sort of like... Absolutely. ...craving it, but at the same time, it's like... Because then you have to oh, admit like that you painful. didn't get it. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. You'll have to admit yeah. that you didn't, there was a void. Yeah. Yeah, it's painful. So, so even though, so the thought of being nurtured sounds wonderful mm. because it, it obviously is, it's, it's, it's um, that part of me that wants to be nurtured is... Mm. <gasps> yeah, yeah, it's hungry. Yeah. And ready. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but the wounded part of me is like, yeah, then you're exposing me. Can I allow me? myself mm. to... Because I suppose what I'm, what I'm trying to say is I think there's going to be a part of me that's going to have some sort of... Almost like a withdrawal process, yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Because even when we think that we want something, you know, we've, we've adapted ourselves to living without, yeah. being in the lack, to suddenly yeah. to have the, the exuberance of the abundance of that care could mm. be so painful. You'd think we would just want it, yeah. but it could just be so painful as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. really, really interesting awareness. Yeah. Mm. So let's have a look. So um, how I was saying, I feel being here is very different from being elsewhere. Culture is a great influence regardless of skin colour. Mm. British culture, that is. There is politeness, but still a lot of violence. Yeah, yeah I, I, th find I that. think I find yeah. that in, in England, I think the violence is... is actually, I think it's emotional violence, yeah. actually. And I know people find it really foreign to hear me say this, you know, and I feel like I have to say, because it's my truth, that as a black person, when I come here, I feel more oppressed because wow. I feel that emotional expression. What it feels like to me is that this is your place. Stay with it. I don't have those experiences in Australia oh God, or anywhere else so in the world. You know, so when I come here, I love being here, of course, and I love being in the space where there well, might be more black people than it. I see. Great. Um, sometimes I see the, I look at the faces of those black people and I see that they're in this oppressive knot and that just makes me sad. Mm. I don't see that same look when I see black people in Australia. Certainly it's different when we're talking about Aboriginal people, so I want us to make that distinction because the experience mm. of being black in Australia is different for Aboriginal people than it is for people of African descent. Mm. But as a, as a black person being in, in England, you wouldn't necessarily think that there is a difference, but there's a huge difference. Yeah. And there's opportunities that I've experienced in Australia that I know would not be open or available if to you were me here. if I was here, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's really, really important. Yeah. So it's kind of, we've gone a little bit off topic, but it's just mm. kind of, you well, know, because how really, we're talking about cultural, yeah, yeah, it's answering how was, yeah, thing about it being con cultural and contextual. Yeah. Absolutely, I agree yeah. with you, Awa. Yeah, absolutely. And it does make sense because that level of oppression you know, just kind of bringing it back to what we're talking about, deprivation, it does make sense because that level of oppression, when we internalise that, yeah. we deprive ourselves. Yeah, of course. We yeah. tell ourselves that we're not worthy. Because we say you're not supposed to be in you're this space. You're supposed to be doing that. Retreats? You're not allowed. Retreats of the white people. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah, what are you talking about? Where are you going? Spas. Where do you think you are? Especially spas. not luxury. Yeah, spas, like, you know. So that thing we kind of used to see in the media showing the spas, we know, and, yeah. and that's a white domain. It's okay for white people to, to indulge themselves it's okay for them indulge to do it. and, yeah, and they, you know, I have no problem with them doing that. Good for them, but I think that you know, if we've internalised that it's too much for us and it's not our space, I think that's what we've got to challenge. Mm. And I think you know what you and I are doing with our work in with um, daughters of the soil. And, uh, and working, doing this work, taking this work to Africa. I think it's just so powerful to take us out of this context oh of, God, of, yeah. of oppression or limited scope Thinking, of who we yeah. can be and put us in a place, you know, mm. where looking like us is the most natural thing, mm. you know, and then do this work. I'm so prepared you know? for that. I cannot wait. <laughs> so, yeah. I cannot wait. wait. Super, super yeah, excited. Really, really excited. So, uh, you know, just to kind of let you, just remind anybody that's watching this live, how are all anybody that's watching this on the replay, we are offering a $100 uh, reduction on the full price, which is going to be this is for the available for the Ghana retreat which is going to be um, on offer until the 30th of June. So if you put down your 500 US dollar deposit... Which is $379 and um, pounds, oh something right. like Are that. It's about 370 something pounds, so even less. Yes. <laughs> for your yeah. deposit. And there are payment plans available as well, which will be going up. We're going to probably do that this the next weekend. Few days, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll try and get it done yeah, yeah. ASAP. But um, there'll be payment plans available as well. But if you can get the deposit down, before the 30th of June, um, then you get 100, 100 US dollars 
off the deposit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, um, so we've talked a little bit about what deprivation looks like. Mm -hmm. So what's the opposite to deprivation? What does, what does emotional abundance and prosperity oh, look like? It looks like... Um, <laughs> Oh, oh I guess I'm just trying to, how do I define it? Okay, it looks so, like, oh yeah, you go. It looks like, um, I know what's mine, and I know what belongs to other people. It means that, okay, let me give you an example. Like today, okay, I've got this little dress on, <laughs> I was going, whoop, whoop. I put this dress on today, because I thought, you know what, I just want to be feminine today, and I've got these long earrings. <laughs> now, there are days when I wake up where I just think, oh, I, don't, I just don't want anyone to look at me. I, I just, I just want to hide in my mm. clothes, you know. Sometimes I do have days like that. But today, I just thought it's beautiful, it's sunny, um, and I just, I just wanted to look nice today. Mm -hmm. And being visible requires, for me, sometimes it requires courage. <laughs> Mm, because yeah. I do get more, I get yeah. more attention. Sometimes I get more attention from men. People will look at me, and I, you know, and, and I don't want to go into shame, you know. So, wholeness is a, for me is also about being visible mm. and being unapologetic about it. Not in an arrogant way, but just like I'm allowed to take up space in the world. Mm. I'm allowed to take up space and not yeah. apologise for it. I'm Emotional allowed to be beautiful yeah. and not and not apologise. For it. I'm allowed to be happy. You know, there was, it, there was something that I was, um, I was doing some stuff in my journal about this the other day and it was about being allowed to be happy. Mm. Like suffering is not a default. It doesn't have to be a default for us as black people. Mm. And I think a lot, for a lot of us it is. Mm. Yeah. Cause that's what we, and I think it is, goes back to what you were saying and what mm. I was saying about the cultural thing. I think mm. it's unconscious in a way. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, that oppression creates emotional suffering, maybe yeah. a low level suffering, but it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's relative, you know? you know, maybe not as bad as it was, you know, like you said, on the plantation or right in the midst of colonialism, but it's still, it's there. contextually, it's still there. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. so wholeness is about giving myself the permission to go, do you know what? I ain't suffering today. I'm going to, I'm going to try my melanin magic. That's what wholeness looks like for me today. It's like, I'm going to put on this dress. I'm going to go and meet my sister. I'm going to go and do my meeting and I'm going to, I'm going to show up as yeah. myself and not apologize. You Sounds know? good. All right, for you. <laughs> so my emotional abundance and, and prosperity for me looks like being really in tuned with what my emotional needs are on a daily mm. basis, like really in tuned because I work with um, women and I work in that helping capacity yeah. it can be really easy for me to hide behind that and yeah. absolutely abandon my own needs you mm. know so for me emotional prosperity and, and abundance looks like taking care of my emotional needs first yeah. and I love that analogy they say on the plane you know if there's an emergency and you have to put your mask on they say to you Put your mask on before you help anybody else, including your children. Yeah. I think to me that sums up emotional abundance and prosperity fully. That I can give from a full place. That I feel mm. really strict that it's my absolute duty to take care of my emotional needs so that I'm always given from that place of surplus. Mm. Always from that place. Yeah. So for I me, that. yeah, that's what emotional abundance and prosperity is about taking care of my needs and that can look like getting therapy when I need it mm. you know so sometimes I tell clients because their clients will say to me oh my god I don't, you know how long will I be doing this for <laughs> you know and I and I you know I did therapy for three years running when I was training because I wanted that experience yeah. of what it felt like to go through that process and really nourish myself so therapy wasn't just something I used to put out fires emotional yeah, no. fires it's but it was a maintenance yeah you know, and I say to my clients the same way when I go to the gym, initially I have a particular goal and the goal might be I want to get fit. Okay, once I've achieved that, I've got to continue going to the gym yeah. less, but I have to continue going to the gym as maintenance. maintenance so I go yeah. to, now I see my supervisor, my therapist, my Mahila once a month. Those are, no, there's no, nothing wrong with me. I'm not falling apart. There's no crisis. These are just emotional maintenance. Yeah. So I love myself enough to factor to in that, that. that cost basic that I take mm. care of myself I also have a thing around holidaying because I need rest so I have a thing around with my partner that every three months we go away together that mm. for me is emotional abundance and and 
prosperity. Relational abundance. It's a relational <laughs> abundance. So we've got time outside our normal life yeah. to go and spend I love with that. ourselves. And then in terms of my family, um, abundance looks like that I come to, to England twice a year in order mm. to nurture my relationship with my family. Yeah. To keep that going. So that's mm. what emotional abundance and prosperity looks like and plays out for me. Mm. That's beautiful, actually. Mm. I, I love that. And um, this is something that I'm very much working on at the, at the minute. And I think, you know, just hearing you talk about abundance from a different perspective that doesn't mean money, I think it's going to really open up a lot of things for mm. people to think yeah. about it in those yeah. terms. Yeah. And I've, you know, I've learned mm. some stuff today from you as well, just hearing you say that and, and just looking at the gaps mm. where abundance is not included. You know, mm. they, it's almost like there's like abundant categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there needs to be abundant categories. It's not just about, oh, how much money have yeah, I got this it's month? Not it's not just material. Like, how we full to, are you emotionally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know? exactly it. How full are you emotionally? Yeah. And, and from and that hungry place, everything you do, there's like an agenda yeah. when you come from that hungry place. Yeah. You know, I'm only giving you so that you reciprocate in some way. And I don't tell you what I need from you, but I'm going to be really angry when you don't, you give, don't it give it to me. me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Mm. That makes so much sense. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, when you think about it in those terms and in terms of categories and maybe like an emotional, a love bank, yeah. you know, then it, it begs the question is, what are we doing, consciously doing, to nurture those categories? Mm. How much money you, not necessarily how much money, but how much money or energy, mm. how much energy are you putting into your relational bank? Mm. How much money am I putting into my parenting bank? Mm. You know, as yeah. a parent, yeah. I have to think about that consciously yeah. as well, because I know my daughter, she will tell me straight. Yeah. If she's looking at got a one today. Like, <laughs> she will tell me, you know, she said, oh, when am I going to get connection? You only got a one out of 10 today. You didn't give me any connection. She'll tell me straight. <laughs> she, you find it really funny. Look, she tells me straight. I love it. If, I, if, I, if she's not getting her needs met, she'll tell me straight. And I want her to be like that. Mm. Because if she can do it with me, when she gets into a relationship with other people, with a man or whatever it is, you know, she's going to, she understands what it means to get her needs met. So she's not, she's not going to put up with anything less. And that's the point. She, my daughter understands now that it's not just about getting a new pair of shoes or having food to eat. She wants that. Connection. connection yeah she wants that connection and for her it's not even it's not even up for discussion mm. you know but for, for me somebody that's trying to that's, that's you know healing from a lot of this stuff it's something that i still have to think about consciously mm. you know so i think you know doing it doing a thinking about the categories and thinking about the um debits mm. the emotional debits that we put into each category of our bank yeah is an important thing to think about, you know. Um, you know, and I think I think the retreat from that perspective, I think is gonna is gonna oh cover God. quite a few of those categories. Yeah. I'm thinking about well, there's the cultural bank. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That you would know? definitely feel that the cultural the bank. cultural bank. I just even been back on that land. I think we cannot uh, um, underestimate. We can't overestimate the impact that will have on us, even on a visceral oh my God, yeah. DNA level. You know, yeah. being on that land to actually do this work. I think mm. that in itself has a huge potential. Yeah, and that is going to be amazing. And I, I can't even, I try to kind of picture. Imagine it. I try to imagine <laughs> it, but I just I just can't. No. I imagine there's going to be tears. I know there's going to be there's tears. There's going to be lots of tears. I, think I know there's going to be tears. We have to kind I of, um, I to order that. Surrender. buckets of tissues. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just being on that land, I think is going to be an, amazing. So how was saying, allowing them to have a voice so that they can be heard. And I think that, mm. that you know, that, that is going to be a key part of it mm. as well. It's just allowing the women to explore who they are and how do we have deprived ourselves as, mm. as black women, you know, living in the UK or wherever we are on the planet, because there's going to be women from, from different places they are going to come. Um, mm. And it's just hearing each other's experiences and just like you, what you were saying before, Faith, getting an un understanding of as how racism plays itself out in different areas across the planet mm. and you know the common the common thing that we all have in, in you know is that we, we, we all still live under the system of racism but how mm. it plays itself out is very different yes yes depending on where we live on the planet so yeah. i think just having that communal 
that collective exploration, I think, is going to be very, very powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be very, very powerful. And yeah. then to do the internal stuff, you know, we're looking at the external stuff, which is mm -hmm. the, the stuff around, you culture, know, culture yeah. and whatever. And then the internal stuff, you know, what we think about ourselves, yeah. how it kind of Just manifests like, in the family. We're taking that time to deconstruct ourselves, completely dismantle. Yeah. You know, like it was Socrates that said, you know, an unexamined life is not a, what, a life worth living. Wow, well, You yeah. know, so taking that time out, and I often, it's some, such a luxury to kind of go, oh, I want to take some time out to go and think mm. about myself, you know, to, to work on myself. Yeah. We can kind of mock that, yeah. you know, really under, undervalue what that does for us, but to kind yeah. of have that time where we can actually deconstruct ourselves yeah. to figure out what are my values? Are my values really my values? Are my values that I was born into? Exactly. Or is that my cultural value? Or is yeah. it the country that I lived in? Or is that white supremacy value? Yeah. Which value is actually mine? So go even having the luxury and the space yeah. to look at that while marinating in care and in nourishment. In the motherland. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that in of it. Oh. Enough said. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, and, yeah. and I, I think for us as well, I think that thing of what you were saying around having the space to explore, I think because we, we live in a, in a, it's become so insidious, that mm. stuff now. I think it's something that we, we do need to be doing more often. I and mean, I, yeah. I, I do it on a daily basis in my journaling and stuff like that in the mornings I do it. But I think to do it in a collective space, I think is even more powerful and to do it on the motherland is even more powerful. Yeah, it's like a pilgrimage. Yeah, and you think, have to get away. Yeah, people have always understood that, you know, for centuries, human beings have had yes. pilgrimages, yeah. you know, where they've taken themselves out of their very everyday life to go and seek spiritual think, sustenance yeah. away from. So there's something magical happens when we're not in our daily lives. Yes. You know, we kind of separate and we get this perspective that we're not open to when we're living our normal lives, mm. you know, even that. And that's one thing for me, even a personal perspective, perspective, that's what I got from being away on retreat too, especially when I was, say, like in India. When I looked back at my life in Australia, the things that were stressing me out, they just seemed so out of proportion, you know, from that vantage point. I mm, mean, it seemed like... Yeah, it seemed like I'd blown like them out of proportion. Yeah. When you're in a different mm. space and you're walking down the street, you're wearing a sari, you're seeing people living really simple lives, and then you're kind of worried about your life back in this Western construct, you know. Mm. And then, you know, you kind of go, oh my God, you know, you just gives yourself a different perspective. Yeah. You know, and I think that in itself, you know, is very powerful for healing. Yeah, gosh, that, mm. that is just hearing that actually mm. is really powerful. So it helps you to get into perspective. Yeah, absolutely. How real abundance is really about uh, allowing yourself to live a lot simply. Yeah, for some and people. And getting focused. Yeah, yeah. On what really matters. What really matters. For certainly, yeah. It certainly brings you back to what is really important yeah. and what really matters. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Wow, I love that. I really, really love that. So, um, is there anything else you wanted to say about wholeness? Yeah. No, abundance I, think, and I feel like I really covered it. Deliciousness. Yeah, I think I feel like it really covered it in those few sentences. You know, I feel I feel very blessed that I do on a daily basis. You know, um, feel feel nourished. You know, mm. I do feel. I'm not saying every minute of my day. I'm not saying that there isn't times where there's not you know challenges. But I do feel confident in my in in my self care, mm. and certainly and. Um, I used to live out of the deprivation, absolutely yeah. used to be me, but that's not me. I'm very far from that person and I do, my resting place is a place of nurturing and, mm. and, and spiritual and emotional sustenance and prosperity and abundance. Mm. You know, and I feel very blessed to operate from that place more often than not, mm. as you would say. Mm. Yeah. 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 And going on a retreat is just really, for me, it's just one of the things over the time with my mm. therapy, my 12 step, and that is one of the things of the time that's solidified, that has moved me out of the place of deprivation and solidified me in that place of, of abundance it. and nurturing and sustenance as, mm. as, as a given, yeah. for sure. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's so important to hear that. And I think sometimes, you know, we can get so caught up with this stuff in our daily lives and whatever. It is. Oh, hi, Astrid. Oh, Astrid. Hello. And hello. Oh, no, you're going to have to listen from the beginning. Hello, Monique. It's so lovely to see all the ladies on here. So, yeah, I think, you know, we can get so caught up with the stuff that we do daily, you know, dropping off the kids, doing a school run, got to pay your bills, got to get do the mm. job and all the rest of it. it. You know, it can be hard to kind of just pause for a minute and say, <laughs> 
how do I actually nurture myself? Yeah, 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 not being caught up in the struggle. It's not like the hustle the is struggle. real and it's like and it can take everything. It can be all consuming. It can be all mm. consuming. And, you know, there was one day this week and I, I just, instead of looking on social media, I allowed myself to just observe what was on my timeline. And just in the, in the five, ten minutes, I was just observing instead of looking, if that makes sense. There was so much negativity on there, you know, and so much suffering around racism and stuff like that. And I think that without realising, I can allow myself to, or we can allow ourselves to absorb a lot of that mm. stuff and just, just think that that's all there is, you know. So I think making a conscious decision to pause and actually be intentional about thinking about how we nurture ourselves, why it's important for us to nurture ourselves, and really taking a, taking a, a hard look at the areas in our lives, i.e. social media or whatever it is, that stops us thinking that, we allow, you know, that we're allowed to, to schedule things in our lives that are abundant, and that suffering doesn't have to be on the schedule all the time. You know, yeah. it doesn't. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because we talk about time, you know, how we spend our time and you know, reinforcing those things that don't really serve us as opposed to, yeah. you know, having really clear boundaries choices, that we yeah. only choose the things that fill us up and nurture yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, it's quite, it's, yeah. you know, we, we carry on like, um, it's, we have no choice around social media mm, that we just have to look, do. you know, we have a lot of choice. Yeah. I unfollow people regularly now. Mm. I'm just like, I understand, there's a diff, there's, sometimes there's a fine line between, you know, I'm not expecting there to be some sort of social media utopia, you know, because that's just not going to happen in terms of the struggle that a lot of us are going through and whatever. I get, I get that. But sometimes I think that people can be so absorbed by, and a lot of people are traumatised by it, so it's almost like that's all they can think about is that stuff. There has to be a balance, mm. you know, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, that both of us are really committed to. We're committed to the solution. Yeah. yeah. We're committed to the solution, the solution yeah. in ha not changing other people. Yeah. Not trying to change the world or anything like that, but just doing it by focusing on ourselves first. Yeah, that's absolutely. The impact of, of racism, slavery, colonisation is so huge on our community that I, I, I don't have the answer in what to yeah. do externally to change it. All I know that there's black people hurting. Yeah. And I just want to be part of that solution. Yeah, same. You know, there's black people yeah. hurting and there's black people hurting each other because we're hurting. And that, I want to be a part of that solution. Yeah. What can I do to first to work on myself mm. so that I'm not re-traumatizing or abusing another black person because of my unconsciousness and then mm. work with other black people to to spread that out into the world yeah. that's just absolutely mm. you know a big commitment for me yeah mm. and the irony of that conversation is that when we do the internal work ourselves when we work on ourselves that in of itself is going to have the ripple effect out yeah, in the community yeah, and out in the world. That's how we absolutely. do it. Absolutely. That's absolutely it. You know? So it's not about, for me, going and going on a protest against white supremacy. I don't want to give it any more energy, if mm. I can, but I want, I want to acknowledge that its impact is absolutely real. Yeah. And what, what people can I, lost. Yeah. And what can I do to help those that are ready to address that? Yeah. That's, in that's the internal my work. Stuff. Yeah. So you do yeah. the internal work, that in of itself is going to have an impact on the external stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's Absolutely. how we build relationships, that's how we build community. And that is the only reason why Faith and I have been able to work together, because we've done the internal work. I know I could not have sat here a few years ago and think that I was going to go on and do a retreat with another black woman. This week, we went and opened a bank account <laughs> together. And that just would not have happened because of the, 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 the trauma that I'd had around yeah, lack trust. Of trust yeah. It just wouldn't have happened. But 100%, it was a fun experience, actually, yeah, it was wasn't great. it? It was yeah. a really fun was experience, great. you know, to go and open a bank account. And the, the blessing in all of that is that the guy that actually dealt with us was also a black man. <laughs> we weren't expecting that. It was really gorgeous. It was really funny. Yeah, it was just, You know, yeah. it was a black guy. It was surreal. They opened the account for us. Yeah, So, you know, we started surreal. talking about how his dad was a Rasta and what. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny, wasn't no. it? You know, so mm. one of the reasons why, you know, I love working with Faith, and I think I'm sure I can speak for you the same thing, is because... You know, we're able to model, this is another example of wholeness. The fact mm. that we're sitting here together in a park, talking about how we opened a bank account together, talking about taking other sisters on a, on a retreat. That is an example of 
emotional abundance. Mm. You know, because yeah. I have a, we have we've built a relationship over yeah, the years, absolutely. and and you know we've decided to work together, and it happens so organically, yeah, yeah. This so exactly organically, it. and it's yeah. because we we learn how to trust each other, we're patient with each other, mm. and you know, Faith is one of the one of the few black women in my life I feel so grateful for because she she was so nurturing, you know, she would tell me straight if I was being hard on myself mm. or anything like that, and I've never had that before. Mm. And that's how I that's how I learned to build trust. She's helped mm. me. She's given she's given me a lot of tools as well to help me serve serve you. <laughs> you know, just in my the, 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 the stuff that we've spoken about and stuff. So it's about when you start doing the work for yourself. That's when you can begin to serve other people yeah, yeah. in a way that becomes really powerful. So we want to give you the opportunity <laughs> to come and experience it with yeah. us. You know, whether come it's some of the workshops, or come to Ghana, <laughs> man. Come to Ghana. In short, ladies, come to Ghana with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So if you that are ticks interested, all the boxes. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're interested, yeah, yeah, yeah. All your come different, to Ghana. Yeah. yeah. Just ticks come, all the boxes. Just come to Ghana, the boxes. You know. And you know what? We would love you to come this year, mm. but if you can't, yeah, there was, that's we, important we've got to know. so many projects. It's important for you to know that there are going to be other opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Faith oh. and I are going to be doing some other things. Yeah, and our we? vision is that we go back to Africa once a year to do a retreat in different countries, and that will morph and evolve. Mm. So, if for whatever reason, you know, my my this, my deep desire is that you choose to come, or you're at the um, you have the resources to come with us this year. Mm. But if that's not the case, I don't even want you to stress <laughs> yourself because this is going to be there's going to be many other opportunities, okay? Yeah. So I think that when we do stuff, we must always do stuff with gentleness and ease and grace mm. and not beat ourselves up or pull ourselves into debt, none of that. You know, but if you have the resources available to you and that includes the money and the time, my biggest wish is that you come on this journey mm. with us. Yeah. yeah, it was a lovely way to wrap up, and just yeah. to kind of just to, just to wrap up. And those of you that joined in uh, later on in the in the in the live, uh, we are offering a hundred US dollars off the total cost of the trip. So if you, um, if you I'm going to you, put the link in the comments. Deposit. If you book your, if you pay your deposit, your five hundred dollar deposit, which is three hundred and seventy something <laughs> pounds, it says this. Just going to let yes. everyone know that. <laughs> if you pay that before the 30th of June, which is next Sunday, then you will get 100 US dollars off the total cost. Yeah. So if you, I'm going to put the link in the um, in the description. But if you go to heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net, you will be able to um, uh, sign up, register your interest, get some get some free uh, you know <laughs> trainings and stuff as well that Faith and I have done in the past. We get those as well. And um, if you sign up before the 30th of June, you will get 100 dollars off. Um, there are payment plans available, which also will be um, which will be uh, activated as well if you book before the 30th of, of June. So if you've got any questions or anything, inbox me, send me a message or whatever. We're happy to answer your questions. And um, yeah, I just look forward to building a relationship, whether it's Ghana or whatever it is. Mm. You know, we're just looking for just join the movement is all I'm saying. If you can't <laughs> just join the movement, sign up, get yourself on the, on the mailing list. Um, you know, Faith and I are very passionate about what we do, as you can see, and we're an example that this stuff works. Mm, yeah. This stuff works, and we, we, we're ready to kind of pass this stuff on to you. So yeah, if you've got absolutely. any, if your soul is telling you to come, put your deposit down. Put your <laughs> deposit down, and uh, we hope to see you there. Do you want to entertain anything yeah. else? Because Faith's going home I'm tomorrow. I'm coming home tomorrow. So my <laughs> Back to Australia. beautiful, beautiful community here. I'm just so, thank you for being so generous and kind and welcoming into your circle with such open hands. Thank you so much. And I physically look forward to, if you're coming to Ghana, I will see you in November. If not, I'll be back here in, in at Christmas time and I will run one workshop for yeah, definitely. your group. We'll so that. yeah, either I see you in Ghana or I see you at Christmas. <laughs> if you have any uh, topics or anything that you'd like the workshop to go on, because last, well, the first year you did, we did the Mother's one, didn't we? Yeah. And this year we did a Father's Day workshop. Um, if you've got any topics or anything that you think you'd like us to work, work on or whatever, on. then put some, you know, send, if send not, us a message. I usually finish the, the end of the year with a mindful ending workshop, oh, wow. which gives us an opportunity to look back on the patterns of the previous year. So before we set, before we set, um, set intention. So I usually run two workshops at the end. I do the mindful ending and then I do the soulful beginning. So ah. usually in December, so we, I might do one or, or one of those two, which will give us a really lovely time to spend some time together and just reflect on the year and then, you know, start to hold some visualisation 
um, about where we want to go in the coming year, okay. 2020. Okay. Great. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I don't take for granted that you choose to spend time with us. Again, yeah, if you've got any questions beautiful. or anything, send us a message and, and let us know. So take care. Enjoy the rest mm. of your day. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. <laughs> see you.